know where the treats is is this the the passing of the torch right is this what this signifies it comes down to that that front office and what they feel is most important the champ is here we've touched down from a higher plane why you made it here we always look forward to that week because it was always intense you know that we ain't coming back we got to the man the myth the legend dante hall my 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 favorite player growing up was dante hall i love you guys <laughs> show, but dante was my guy get to dash you because you're done on the war feet This episode of Chief Concerns is brought to you by BetOnline.ag. Our partners at BetOnline continue to be the number one source for all your sports betting needs and sports betting info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including Major League Baseball, the latest fighting news, and even next season's early NFL futures. With training camp right around the corner, BetOnline has opened up odds for team wins, division futures, and of course, the Super Bowl. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code, that's BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to get the bonus and get into the action. Bet online where the game starts. Looking to help your favorite Chiefs podcast? Well, we're trying to raise money to create merchandise for our online store, as well as be able to have more merch to do giveaways to all of our fans. To any of our YouTubers, if you see down below, you can show your support with the new Super Thanks option. Any amount will go a long way towards helping us launch our online store. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks to all of our followers for your continued support. Enjoy the episode. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Chief Concerns. I'm here with our host, former tight end Jason Dunn. And Jason's actually coming to us all the way from Mexico on his vacation. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing today? <laughs> I'm, I'm out here in Mexico, in Cancun, with my lovely family. We're enjoying ourselves out of here, having a great time. So I, I want everybody to say hi. You're part of my family, a Chiefs family right here. So it's part of the family here, all right? Looks like a blast. <laughs> so this is live in a secret location. I can't tell you exactly where it is, Marcus, but I just in Cancun, okay? All right. I can't so everybody it. say hello one more time. All right. We're gonna go ahead and start the show. <laughs> Can we get a go, Chiefs? We got we actually got a Titans fan. Yeah, I like the Chiefs too. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, see, uh, okay. So you gotta turn the camera off. See, there's, there's always one Steelers fan. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> we'll start it. That's great. Uh, well, I, I gotta say, it looks like you have the the, the great uh, great crew to vacation with there, JD. Man, and, that, and that's only part of the people. So you know, uh, missing up my brothers, uh, you know, uh, my lady, some other people was you know out here too. With it. so everybody's kind of just got finished eating dinner, having uh, some nice dessert, uh, going to a little spot that has a little entertainment. So, uh, nice. but I, I'm gonna switch my hat up a little bit. All right, let's go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my little vacation hat down and come on with the with, with the Chiefs look. Okay, Ooh. here we go. Here we go. I like it. So, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> here we are. We're back in business, baby. We're back in business. So how's it been going, man? How's it up that way? Uh, it's really hot. I mean, I'm sure you're experiencing the same kind of thing down in uh, down in Mexico. But yeah, it's r- really hot in uh, Virginia. Um, and uh, and I think uh, I think all the, all the Chief fans in general are getting you know hot and excited for uh, training camp as we as we inch a couple of days away from it now. Um, so, and yeah. uh, lots to get into. And I know there was um, a few of our followers actually had met, met, uh, not messaged us, commented on on Twitter asking where our friend uh, E E Warfield is. Um, and uh, he will be coming back. Um, he's just taking a brief hiatus um, uh, during the off season and stuff. And he, he says he will be back uh, at some point during the regular season. So don't, don't worry. You got JD, you got the offense and we'll bring, we'll bring the defense on at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, Eric will be back. So um, for all the guys who are wondering about that. Um, but yeah, uh, la- last week, a uh, good episode of Cornell. Um, we got a great response from that. Um and uh, yeah, we're ready. We're ready to uh, break down some training camp stuff and some of the breaking news that's been happening over the last week. You know, we talked about this how it's been kind of quiet for a little while, but now things are starting to pick up, pick up again as we inch to closer to training camp and just you know things you know just things keep popping up now. So uh, you ready to yeah. rock, buddy? Let's rock, baby. Let's go. Let's go with it. 
All right. So uh, last week, uh, as we noted uh, that Friday was the deadline for the Chiefs and Orlando Brown Jr. to come to a deal. Um, and as you, uh, most of our viewers probably know, that did not happen. Um, Chiefs offered him pretty good money, uh, but did not reset the tackle market in the way that Orlando Brown really wanted. Um, NFL Network reported uh, yesterday, I think Jeff Chidea reported that the Chiefs were very frustrated with Orlando Brown to not work with him on a team-friendly deal. Um, they also said they were kind of disappointed because this, they said this isn't the guy they traded for. Um the fact that he didn't want to work with them on, on, on a deal and they were kind of upset that he didn't want to and they thought that there was he would take one just based on everything they knew about him but quite frankly he left baltimore because he wanted to get paid like a left tackle not right tackle and that was the kind of the the, the that's why he wanted out of there so kind of weirded out as the fact they were surprised by any of this um initial reports are that brown is likely to play in the franchise tag however in that same nfl network report uh, it's still kind of in doubt as if he's going to come to training camp or if he even is intending on playing uh, week one. So, J.D., what do you make of all this Orlando Brown Jr. drama? I mean, like you said, uh, I mean, what did we expect? So I don't know when somebody said, this is not the guy we signed for or who we brought here. Uh, that's exactly who you brought here. Uh, I mean, he made it known that he wanted to be a left tackle and he wanted to be paid left tackle money. And so it wasn't really a shock or be surprised by that, uh, especially when, you know, he came out and he performed, uh, what I, I would say, uh, better as the season got, you know, went on. Uh, and he did, he improved. He, without a doubt, he became a pro bowler. And so, uh, you know, I know we there, there's a lot of, you know, opinions about where he is as far as, uh, you know, where he ranks as far as left tackles in the league. Um, you know, I think he's I think he's a good left tackle. I think he's going to get better. And so one of the things I've said is, you know, because he's 25 years old and he made a pro bowl, uh, you could get a guy like this for a long time. And if you get him right now, then uh, you don't necessarily have to deal with the headache of, you know, later on and then trying to find another guy later on. And so, uh, you know, to me, um, this is this is part of the NFL. This is the business side of it. So uh, it's not always uh, you know easy to swallow, and sometimes these things do happen. If, and, and if two camps are you know far enough from each other, then nothing's going to get done. Uh, the thing is, it just puts you know the Chiefs in a precarious position right now. Uh, and I know they said you know an agent came out and was like, "Hey, well look, he's going to go ahead and sign the franchise tag." Well, I said this on Twitter. I said, "Look, I'm not." I'm not trusting anything an agent says at all until you put his, your eyes on him at camp and he's out there kicking back in pass protection, then we'll see. Other than that, right now, he's he's uh, not signed with the Chiefs and we need to see him, uh, the first training camp on the 27th. And so if it doesn't happen and he doesn't work and he sits out for, you know, the, the first week or if he decides to sit out the entire year, then it just it puts uh, the Chiefs in a in a in a, a difficult position. I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it would be difficult. So, yeah. <laughs> hold on. So I'm almost yeah, yeah, conservative energy down here. But it, it, it puts them in like a precarious position. Uh, but you know, this is uh, you know, for a guy that I think is is very talented. He's young. Um, you know, what, what do you do? Somebody said, said it best, like, so what, what's your options? You know, what do you go to? So this is where we may find ourselves on the 27th, but you know, we'll, we'll have to wait till that day to, to really go into that though. Yeah. Um, I, I did want to ask you, um, just looking at the numbers of what was reported as what we offered him. What did, what did you think about the contract that was, that was offered to him? Uh, it, you know, when the first the reports first came out, uh, I didn't really look at the details. I didn't know anything about it. And then I seen like the CBS report, it was talking about the money. Um, uh, and you know, it, it wasn't top left tackle money. It, it, it wasn't. And so the way that the, the, the deal was structured, uh, I think it was a lot of money that was kind of toward the, the last thing. I think at the very end, he was going to make like 45 million, which he, he wouldn't have definitely wouldn't have seen at all. Yeah. Uh, but you know, he had a, a nice, I guess, signing bonus. 
uh, what he would have made a year uh, was was delectable. But I think he wanted to have at least something more, something that he's saying, look, I want top left tackle money. And I think this I, I think this might have put him in around like number five or maybe just out the fifth range of left tackle. And I, I guess they want to get done. And so, look, that's that's every bit his prerogative. And sometimes these things, how they happen and, you know, they all, you know, Every camp comes out and says, well, we made a great deal to this guy. This guy didn't take it. We were trying to make him the, you know, the highest paid left tackle. But then all of a sudden when you see the contract, uh, wasn't necessarily so. Yeah. So, you know, Atlanta Brown and his camp have every right to, to refuse it. Uh, the Chiefs, like I said, with their offer, they felt like it was fair and it just didn't work. So here we are. I gotta say, you know, we've talked about it on the, on the show in the past that like, you know, it's Veach, man. He's kind of a, uh... He's been a little. He's been a little frugal with it when it comes to paying these guys. Let Tyreek Hill. He traded him, and now it's Orlando Brown situation. It's kind of you know just, you know. And he likes Orlando Brown. That's that's the crazy thing. All the reports say that he loves him. He just you know just just doesn't want to pay him what you know what Orlando Brown wants. Uh, yeah, uh, very interesting on that on that front. Um, I did want to ask another question about Orlando Brown. Um, now with his contract situation, the, the way it is, it's like, you know. He, the first two years or the first three years of his uh, being in the NFL, he's made around $6.2 million um, collectively um, with his franchise tag. He would get paid 16 million. So this, this would be a big payday for a guy who has not been paid a lot yet. Cause he's still on that, that rookie scale where he's only made with 6 million going into right. year. Mm-hmm. But like a lot of people are saying the leverage is in the chief's hands because if he doesn't sign that tag, he's still playing what's saying. He, he's still getting that rookie scale money. Whereas if he signs a tag, he gets that big payday, which he hasn't had yet. So would you kind of say the leverage is in the chief's advantage right now on this whole franchise tag situation? Well, uh, not necessarily. Uh, and the reason being is because you got uh number 15 back there. Who's the highest paid quarterback in the league. Who's the best quarterback in the league. And you need somebody to protect him. Right. So that's the reality. Uh, that's the way I look at it. And so the thing is, you can't just put anybody over there to protect him, especially a guy who has been getting better, who was a, who was a pro bowler this past year, uh, this past season, who got better as the season went along. Uh, and you got to make sure 45 is, hey, look, 45 million is upright. <laughs> you got to make sure he's upright. So yeah, make sure you protect your team. I mean, that's your priority. Uh, and that's where you got to weigh the things. That's how, that's how you weigh it. Um, like I said, you can just can't put anybody over there. That that that's just not going to work. Um, and so, you know, you start looking at the options who you have on a team. Is like, can this guy hold up? Because, like I said, man, there's a lot of great defensive ends just in our division alone. The way they go through, yeah. you know. And so that's going to be tough. We're going to play them twice a year. You know, we look at San Diego. We're looking at Oakland. Um, you know, Denver. So it's, it's some tough hombres, man, on the other side, man. That you know, we had to go against, no doubt about it. And so uh, I, I would I would feel a lot better if uh, uh, Orlando Brown Jr. was over there protecting him. Uh, not saying that these other guys may not be able to do it. I don't know if they're that, the caliber that he is. I, I don't believe they are. Yeah. Uh, and not, not really a knock to them, but, you know, we're talking about somebody who made the Pro Bowl. So we got we to think about a guy who's just been getting better uh, and better. Uh, but the priority, without a doubt, is making sure 15 is okay. Yeah. Bottom line. I mean, that, that's your franchise. And so as he goes, the Chiefs are going to go. Mm-hmm. And so if he goes down, then what, what do you do? Right. So let's just say the scenario happens. OK, that you don't sign a little, you know, Leonard Brown Jr. Then you put a guy out there uh, who is not as uh, dynamic, good of a, a, a pass blocker uh, as Leonard Brown Jr. And then something happens to, to Patrick. Mm. then what do you think the fans are going to say, right? I mean, we just give them scenarios that, you know, ifs, would have, could have, should have, right? Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, knock on wood, man. Well, I mean, we, we, nobody wants that scenario to happen, not, not yeah. at all, in any form or fashion, right? And so I think you just, you have to be very uh, uh, intentional about how you want to be able to deal with this whole situation. Mm-hmm. So uh, – that's why I don't think the leverage goes into their part because even if if, if, if Leonard Brown Jr. is paying, you know, he's playing on, you know, the rookie, you know, deal, he's going to be able to get signed by somebody. Somebody's going to sign him, right? And if they go ahead and trade him away and work through the season, whatever, how that works out, I mean, he's 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 a talented guy, yeah. you know. 
he's a talented guy. So uh, what's that old saying? You don't want to, uh, 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 you know, cut your nose, spite off your face. Some might get it. Some might, you know, to that, to that, you know, to that degree, right? You just don't want to do it. Just be like, ah, you know, well, you know, we didn't want to pay him, and you know, we're not going to pay. I'll pay us, guy. And I get it. I do. I, I really do get it. My thing is, uh, you know, what's the contingency plan, right? Do do you trust the other guys that you have in there to do their job to protect fifteen? That's that's the real question. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I I know, like, looking at next year, we're gonna have Frank Clark comes off the books, um, so we're gonna have a lot more money next year. I mean, look, we traded away Tyreek Hill because we didn't want to give him number one receiver money. Okay, we didn't do that. Now we don't want to give Orlando Brown number one tackle money. It's like, what are we saving for? I mean. There's got to be some kind of plan for it. And I know v- v- is in, in that same Jeff, Jeff Chidia report, he said they have a – it's a new thing they kind of want to get to clear in the locker room. They said earlier on last year there was too much talk about contract and negotiations during season, and they're like, we don't really – they're trying to send a message to the locker room. It's like we want a different kind of – different kind of mindset going into the season. We, we, we don't want guys talking about money – during the season, we kind of want guys, you know, wanting to win, and, and then we can talk about money after the season goes. So it seems like they're sending some kind of message, what Jeff Shadia put, said in his report yesterday. Well, uh, look, it, it, that's always going to happen. That's, that's never going to change. Yeah. And what we see last year, how it happened with uh, Tyreek Hill, same thing. They wanted to try to do it. Hey, look, I won't wait till after the season, and then, you know, this is what happens. Mm-hmm. And so if you continue to do that, sometimes you're going to miss out on great players. Yeah. You know, cause guys want to get paid and sometimes you just can't get past it. But I guess you had to, what you have to do is you had to quantify, like, is this guy that valuable to the team that we can't let this guy go? Right. Can we not let this type of talent actually leave about the building? Mm-hmm. And so we know we got the main, the main guys who will be there. You know, Patrick for sure. Can't let him go. Uh, Chris, Chris Jones is coming up. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta sign him. You know, you want to give Kelsey a good deal, keep them on, on and around as long as possible. Um, but I think your core guys is what you want to be able to do. And, and if you know, if it's consistency and something synonymous with having a great quarterback, it's having a great left tackle, mm. keeping him upright, then you might have to sit there and say, we might have to go ahead and just pay the money to get a guy in here. Yeah. It's, it's going to be hard to get a guy in a draft. And if you, if you send a guy out, uh, you know, you're trying to win right now. Yeah. Right. And the, and the money's going up. You're going to get money. I mean, it's going to happen every year. Money's going up. The thing is, uh, the type of players that you have here, as long as you have the core guys here, yeah, I think you can pretty much hang your hat on that, man. I really do. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out going to next year. Um, and it, and you know, and again, we could tag him again next year. So I think a lot hinges on um, you know, what happened, what how he plays this year. I mean, if there, if there, if you do kind of see a growth with him, the last thing on this topic, um, now we talk about wh- where the leverage uh, kind of lies with rather than the advantage. Okay, but it, let's say Orlando Brown misses training camp, but then comes reports for week one. That sets who, who's that hurt more, the team, or is that it set him back? I mean, it's kind of a combination of both, right? Because you're they're not they're not going to go with Orlando Brown if he misses all training camp and week one comes around. He reports. Do they put him back in at left tackle? Or I mean, what happens in that in, in that case? Well, I, I think you have to. Uh... I mean, week one, he comes, you're saying if he comes back week one, hasn't he, been in, in no he, training camp? Yeah, he, he reports right after uh, week three preseason, ready for week, uh, that Monday going to week one of the, of, of the season. No, nah, I, I mean, no, nah, I mean, you had to, you had to have some training uh, with the team and continuity as far as like what's going on with the offense. I know he knows the offense really well, but you had to be in there actually going against guys, yeah. um, you know, to be effective. So I don't care how great of a tackle you are. Uh, Nothing's like going against a guy in practice and game speed and, and, and NFL players all the time. I mean, there's only so much that you can do to practice on your own uh, without actually seeing uh, real fire. And yeah. so if he's not going against good defensive ends, I mean, he's, he's going to be able to help out Kalafkis, you know, Frank Clark and all those other guys mm-hmm. getting some good work. And if he's not in there, he's going to be behind the eight ball. That's going to hurt him without a doubt, right? Because you can't start him. It's like, well, we, we put him in. How much work has he actually had? So, I mean, it's just sometimes you just need uh, game shape. You need that real physical football and practice uh, to be prepared. And if you're sitting at home and, you, you know, working at a facility, it's not going to get it. 
You're not can't lift enough weights. Uh, you need live bodies to go against, man. Some real, some real tough guys. Mm. Yeah, only so many tennis uh, tennis ball workouts you can do. Uh. Yeah, yeah, man. No, you, you you need that live body. You need you need to feel that power, that oomph, that push, that hit. So, you know, when you're out there catching tennis balls and you soften yourself up, man, you don't want to do that. You don't do that because it's real deal when it comes out there. When the when when the game time starts, mm. it is the real deal. And so, um, yeah, that that'd be a, a bad situation. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't drag out to, to what a month from now. That'd be horrible if that if that was the case. But my thing is this: it, it's it's like if you know you're gonna sign the deal, why wait till week one? You might just get to training camp and go ahead and sign the deal, right? Yeah. You know, seriously. I mean, you, you're trying to hold out and, and seeing if they're gonna budge. Yeah. I, I think they're they're firmly planted in what what they want to do, how they want to do it, and so. Like I said, these reports coming out, like, look, he's gonna play for the for the for the tag, franchise tag. The Chiefs right now is like, hey, each and all, we gave him what we what we thought was fair. Yeah. This is where we are with it. So, like I said, the only thing about that is the sour grapes, right? Is this gonna be one of those days where all season long is gonna be disgruntled? Yeah. Or is he just gonna go out there and work and, and prove? Matter of fact, prove it. If he goes and proves himself as being a, a, a top five left tackle or one of the best. Mm-hmm. Like I said, man, then he's like, look, now you're going to have to really pay me. Yeah. Okay? So, uh, but like everybody's saying, like, prove it. Fine. Go ahead and prove it. Sign yeah. the tag. Prove it. If that's hey, going to be the deal. It'll get, it'll get your money, yeah. I, yeah. It, we, we talked about it when – I wasn't – the whole thing was kind of backwards when, when he was hiring hiring an agent with like a month – with like three weeks before this whole deadline was coming. I and mean, that, that, that's just like that, – that's bad timing, I would say, on, on that on that matter. Um <laughs> I also, though, you know, we talked about having this young, like, young agent who, like, he, I don't think the kid has really any clients. We at first we were like, okay, he might, he might this kid might settle for any kind of deal, which he didn't. And this, yeah, if you think yeah. about it this way, this kid's gonna want to want to make sure Orlando Brown gets paid big time. So that also sets a precedent, so other players are like, ooh, this agent, uh, this agent's going out getting big bucks for guys. Yeah, this, this agent ain't settling for a- anything less than that, uh, that that top dollar, man. He want he wants to get his name out there. <laughs> Man, it's, it's, it's hard to, to catch, man, a, a, you know, a, a golden goose for the first time you go out there, man. He, but he's got one. He's got one in this, in this corner in, with, with Atlanta Brown Jr., no doubt about it. I mean, and he knows he's got to stick with his guns, right? He's like, if I want to keep this guy, I've got to stick with my guns. I have got to be as, as rigid as I possibly can to negotiate at the table, yeah. just like these other guys, right? So, uh, I mean, good on him. Good on him, you know, and, and if he if he gets what he wants in the deal, yeah, that will be a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, easy for guys kind of, you know, maybe come to his camp. He'll establish himself. So, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. nothing better than this advertisement than getting the, uh, the number one uh, uh, guy, uh, number one left tackle money. Um, oh, yeah. That, 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 yeah. That, that, that'll go down this kid's grave uh, when, when, when it's all said and done if he gets this done. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, he was like, he probably came in like, look, don't let the smooth taste fool you. You know, I might get a baby face, man, but I ain't no baby here. You know, I ain't, I ain't with behind the ears. You know, I ain't drinking no Similac, so I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here with it. All right, let's, let's negotiate. So good for him. Good for him. Yeah, good for him. Um, yeah, and and I hope for every all parties' sake, I hope Orlando Brown comes out, dominates. You know, we see that that this is the left tackle that we traded for, and we give him the money. Um, but yeah, so. Yeah. To follow up on the, the first topic, so if Orlando Brown Jr. does not hold out and misses training camp and week one, as some reports say that might happen, um, who do you think should be the starting left tackle? There's, there's a lot of different names out there. Um, so starting left guard, Joe Thune, uh, he stepped up during when we played Cincinnati last year when Orlando Brown came out for a few series. Um, he looked good. I mean, he came in and, and, and looked like looked like a solid left tackle. And he did spot starts at left tackle in, in New England. He could play all over the line. That was kind of one thing about Tooney that he could play all over the O line, and that's one of the things we love about uh, our lineman versatility. Um, so he looked good. Uh, then we got guys like Lucas Niang and Prince Tiga Wanu Wanu Agu. I can't. Wanu Agu. Yeah, Wanu Agu. Who, who he both guys have played uh, some left tackle in their career. Uh, one uh, Prince actually played left tackle in an NFL game. Luke Niang has not done that yet. Um, oh no, Niang has stepped up a, 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 as left tackle, but he got hurt, and that's why Tooney had to come in at the, in that Bengals game. Uh, so combined, they have like twelve starts uh, in, at, at um, left tackle in the uh, NFL. 
Uh, but Niang might actually be one of the first guys on the PUP list as as he's uh, still recovering from a patellar injury that he had uh, last year. Um, so then outside of that, uh, this past offseason, we signed Jerron Christian, who's played over a thousand snaps at left tackle with the Redskins, not Redskins, Washington football team, um, and most recently the uh, Houston Texans, where he actually, you know, he was a starting left tackle last year. He, um, and when he was with the, uh, the Washington football team, he actually took over when um, Trent Williams left and went to for, the 49ers. He actually took over at the, the left tackle that year and got hurt. So he's been his, his career has been kind of hindered by injuries. Um, so if and then you also have other names as uh, I think Riley Reeves, a free agent. And so is Eric Fisher, who we, we know uh, in Kansas City well. So let's say Orlando Brown's not there. Who is the guy that you think is going to end up taking some of those left tackle reps? <laughs> Man, that that's the tough question. Uh, it really is. Um, but it, the list of guys that you gave me is—I mean, it's not a bad list. It's not a—it's not a terrible list of yeah. guys. Uh, but they're not Orlando Brown Jr. And the only one that that may be able to do the job is uh, is Thune. But I want him playing left guard. I don't want him out left tackle. You know, that that would be—I uh, want to say the the desperate move um i do a guard to me and so will he have some problems with some some speed pass rushes possibly you know you know and of course they look at all the things with his arms and whatnot like but I'm not saying that thuny can't do it i mean you know he's a capable man without a doubt a capable lineman uh if they put him over i would like okay yeah that true. Yeah, definitely. If it was something like if, if that's just part of your plan, just contingency plan for like three or four games, yes, maybe, right? I wouldn't make it a whole year, you know, uh solution. I wouldn't. Um uh, and so I, Thune would be that guy, like I said, in 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 but hey came in last year in the same fashion. Mm. Uh the Garan Christian, is that the name? Yeah. He, now look, he's he's a guy that's been around. He's he's got some snaps to left tackle. I think he might be the fit as far as getting him in if he's if he's healthy. That may be your guy. Him and also too, uh, I think uh, Prince uh, uh, Wananagu, right? And I, I, you know, the thing is, I, I've actually been looking at this guy uh, when he went up to Philly and he was on the practice squad up there too. And so I've always wondered, like, how this guy hadn't played. I watched some of his film when he played at Auburn, man. He's he, he's a great left tackle. He's got great feet. Uh, he's very athletic. Uh, so you know he's 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 kind of raw, but he's got he's got the ability. He does. They just said sometimes he doesn't lock out. He didn't get his hands on, on, on guys. But that's something he can learn. I mean, he's been around for, the, uh, what, last three or four years in the league? At least three, I think, mm-hmm. where he's been on practice squad, at least getting some looks with some guys. And so – I like him. I like him a lot because he's just the athletic ability that he has, right? I think he could become a good tackle, uh, but I, I don't know if they just haven't really gave him a shot. Uh, who was the other guy that you said? Uh, uh, Tooney, uh, well, Niang, but he's likely to uh, he's an off yeah. UP. Yeah, Niang, I, I mean, you know, you keep him at right, uh, you know what I mean? I mean, he, he was hurt, so – there, there's some things you can do. I think you like, you know, Prince, and then, like I said, the guy, Duran uh, 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 Christian, is a guy that that kind of kind of sits well with me. Uh, then you still, like I said, you got, uh, oh my goodness, who's who? Uh, you said uh, Fisher. I, I don't think you bring Fisher back. I, I don't think you do. I mean, I you know you could if, if that's. Hey, if it's like, look, we, we got to go ahead and, and look for the the picture from the, you know, <laughs> bring him on in, the old reliever, you know, <laughs> come on in here, see what you got still, possibly, but I I don't think you do that. I don't think you do that. I think what you do is you just you just try to work to bring uh, and make sure that uh, Orlando Brown Jr. is there on week one. That way you don't have to go to that contingency plan. But if that's what you have to do, uh, the two guys that we had, three guys that we got. Um. Mm, ooh, that's what I'm saying. It, man, it's tough. It's like eh, you. It's what you want to do. Okay, we got to ride with it. You know, that's what we had to do. And the thing is, because we have, I think we have at least depth at guard. That Thune could go out to left tackle. Like I said, that that would be the that would be maybe your best scenario. 
Yeah. Or like I said, maybe a uh, uh, Garan Christian, you know, and I like Prince. Uh, so I don't know. No, man. I hate, I hate to hear this. I hate to, this whole situation stinks. Yeah. Oh, just, yeah. But here we are. <laughs> well, because go, going into the last two weeks, all, all we were saying is that we need, we need another edge rusher. And now, now we might have to uh, worry about the left tackle situation on top of getting uh, another uh, edge rusher to rotate with the guys. Um, right. It's a, it's a very tricky situation. I will say I do agree with you. I think um, obviously Tooney, everyone loves Tooney, but w- w- the way he played in that Bengals game with, with the spot uh, snaps at, um, at left tackle, you know, he's a vers- versatile guy, but Jerron Christian has the, the most experience playing left tackle in the league of all the guys we have in the squad, you know, um, uh, of the guys we're talking about here. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. we brought him in, you know, let, let, let the guy play a little bit. And like, I've seen some of the clips of him. I mean, he, he looked good, um, yeah. you know, but yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, he, he's going to be a capable guy. Yeah, he is. Um, and like I said before, it's always that question: Do you trust him? Uh, if he stays healthy, he'll, he'll be okay. I think he'll be all right. Yeah. It's going to be a little tough, but if you trust him to make sure that he's watching 15's blind side, then that's on you. Understand that. You know that that's part of negotiation tactics. Like you got to take risk. That's a risk that you have to take. Yeah. Beat them understand that. They know that. They, they understand that risk. They assess it. And, and hopefully Orlando Brown, because, you know, him and Mahomes are very close. Hopefully Orlando Brown doesn't want his, uh, you know, he'll sign, the, he'll sign the franchise tag and he'll come and surprise this NFL Network report because that's his boy and he doesn't want him to get hurt with the, you know. Man, look, if I was Orlando Brown Jr. right now, I'd be down at Pat's place blocking the mailman coming in <laughs> to put the mail up. <laughs> uh, we, we, I'm blocking everybody. Just give, give them a call every single day. That way, you're talking to it like, look, man, we, we need to go out here and get this thing done. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe, look, maybe, maybe, you know, during in those phases, Pat's just, he wants to stay out of things like that, right? He's like, look, I, I've, I've said my piece, but I'm going to stay out of this part of it because I understand that part of it is business too, yeah. right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Um, ho- hopefully, it's none of those guys' names that we talked about. Hopefully, we, that everything goes smoothly. Uh-huh. With Leonard Brown signing his tag and is coming to training camp, def- defying mm-hmm. all the uh, the media reports out there. Um, so, okay, one of the guys we mentioned was Lucas Niang, who might be uh, be on the pop list, recovering from his patella injury that he had last year. Um, Teller um, and he is a, a two other guys actually might uh, start on the season on the PUP. It's uh, Justin Ross, uh, who we talked about last week with Cornell Powell, who was his um, teammate there. And then also um, Rashad Fenton, who had uh, shoulder uh, surgery on uh, the offseason. I believe he's still recovering from that. So the guys who potentially could be on PUP. But well, the big thing with the Justin Ross is Justin Ross probably got the most hype uh, of our of our class, really. I would say he's up there with the guys who drafted and the guys who, who went undrafted as far as media and, uh, and social media um, and our fans going nuts of his one-handed catch that he had during uh, minicamp uh, or the rookie OTAs. Um, but um, the question I do have uh, is, you know, the big thing with him was, was injury concern um, and, you know, coming out of college, you know, he had a, he had a couple injuries, a stretch fracture in his foot is one of them. Uh, and there was a photo, and I don't, I don't know if you re- remember this, but he didn't finish off the mandatory minicamp. There was the last two days, it was an undisclosed injury. They didn't really go into detail what that was. Then two weeks ago, he was seen at some high school community event um, where he was um, in a boot, and he was using a stroller for an injury on his left foot, um, which is the, the same foot he had, uh, the, the, the stress fracture, uh, back in November uh, 2021. So, I, I mean, I guess the question is, if you were in charge with the Kansas City Chiefs, wh- how would you kind of like with this stress fracture he hit with this, you know, this fo- the foot injury that he has, how would you kind of um, monitor this and, and kind of deal with Justin Ross and knowing and what we know about his injury history and, you know, we kind of have to like be kind of like, you know, proceed with caution, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what, man? It, here's the deal. Uh, it's real simple in the NFL. And you learn this usually your first year. And you can't make the club in the tub. And I know we talk about potential. And there's a lot of guys that come into the league with potential uh, that may not make it. That's just reality. And there's draft picks. It's not going to make it. That's the reality. And so Justin Ross, who was an uh, uh, undrafted free agent, uh, trying to make the roster – uh, with this kind of setback, it's going to be tough. 
it's going to be tough. Uh, you know, he was kind of looking at uphill battle anyway because of, you know, the medical history he had, right? And so now starting on PUP, uh, it's going to be difficult for him. It's going to be difficult. Not impossible. I, don't get me wrong. It's not impossible. I'm just saying it's going to be difficult uh, because I think right now what you have on the roster as far as wide receivers, there's a lot of comp- competition and capable guys out there right now that can catch the football for the Chiefs. Yeah. And that's just that's the reality of it. That's the deal. And so that's a good place to be, man. I'm telling you, right, at, at this moment, I know everybody kind of talks about it, that the one-hand catch and stuff like that, man, look. I mean, sure, we had his partner on last week, man. Did, wasn't that a great interview, man, with, with Cornell Powell? Man, in, incredible, man. Great young man. Great young man. And so I, I tell you what, he's the guy that got there fired. He's been here for a year. He's the guy I think that could go out and he could go and, and make some plays. And so, uh, you know, it's good to kind of look at a guy and his potential, what he could possibly do in the league. But, look, you got to deal with the guys that you have right now who's in the room, yeah. right? And so, you know, you got shoot, MBS, you got uh, Juju, you got Sky Moore, you got uh, McCole Harmer, you know, and you got Josh Gordon. You got uh, who else? Man, it's a whole uh, – Cornell, Corey. Cornell Powell, right, of course. Who? Fountain. And, and Reese Fountain. I mean, come on, man. You, and and uh, who um, – um, There's a new guy that everyone's raving about, the dude from uh, Tampa, uh, Justin Watson. Justin Watson, yeah, who's played a little bit. So he, you know, so it, there's guys that's there and they hungry. So I know everybody was kind of looking at him like, oh, look what he did in college. And stuff. Look, there was a lot of great guys in college that made a lot of different plays. Mm. Uh, that's always going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen in that for a roster. You're going to have guys like that. Oh, yeah. The Chiefs are loaded with receivers who are going to come out here and compete. And so, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that Justin Ross is at the position that he's in. Uh, but it's going to be tough with him. And so just the same thing, man. It's the NFL, man. They move on. It, 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 these things happen. I'm, I'm not saying they're moving on right now. I'm just saying because of the injury, where he's at right now, uh, you know, it might be a little tough. Uh, but I'm pushing for I'm always pushing for a guy, man. I, I, I love a guy that that shows perseverance, has gone through some adversity. I cheer for guys like that. I really do. And so Justin Ross could – you know, go past when nobody drafted him, undrafted free agent comes out and he's in a boot and he's got this uh, medical condition. But against all odds, he still makes it and he still comes out and he's just burning everybody up. Man, I love it. I, I, I would just absolutely love that story. So don't get me wrong. I'm pushing for the guy to make it, man. But I'm, I'm a realist, too. I'm, I'm just yeah, I know NFL teams. I know how these things work. Uh, when you do see talented guys and something happens, it might just be a setback or something like that, especially if not a, a drafted guy. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's a tight situation. It's tight. And, and, and I'm not one to, you know, like, you know, you've been, you've been there before. You, you've seen guys who had all talent in the world just didn't make it for whatever reason, whether they, they were nicked up a lot and there, there a lot of injuries happened, things that they couldn't really control, right? There was out of their control. Right. You've seen that, I mean, firsthand. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. All the time. I mean, it's year in, year out. I mean, there's it, times you see like, man, look at this guy out here, man, making plays, and plays, and plays. And then all of a sudden something happens, gets an injury. And then he's down two or three days. And then what you steadily start seeing is they're moving him out of like, you know, the playing time. And so when you start seeing that they suddenly moving him out of the playing time, start moving a little bit back you know, from the depth chart. He starts falling a little bit behind and you start lagging. You start seeing him going into treatment and it's like, dang, God, man. Like, man, I was pushing for this guy. I mean, every year, year in, year out, man, we, I mean, we just see it. I've seen it yeah. year in, year out. That a guy that you say, man, this dude's got talent. Mm-hmm. He can play in it for football. And then all of a sudden, yeah. the unfortunate happens. So, I don't know, man, you know. <laughs> The, the thing about Ross is we, we don't really – no one knows his injury. We just saw a picture with him uh, with a boot on and that little stroller thing for for um, his his foot, which happens to be the same foot he had a stress fracture in 2021. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you look at it, like Big Ben Roethlisberger, you've seen him a- after games wearing a boot, walking boot. A lot of guys wear the walking boot. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a serious injury, but it's just something to be mindful of as that is the same foot that he had the stress fracture in. So – I mean, that's all we know. We, we, we don't know anything. He's wearing, wearing uh, a boot right now, but who knows? And he didn't, and he didn't finish minicamp because of some injury that we didn't really? know about. They never told us. So, 
Well, no, no. well, big men wouldn't move around no way, you know. So, <laughs> you know, he he's got that cannon. That's all he had to do: stay in the pocket. He, he's not he's not running out anywhere. Yeah. But just around, he he makes his he makes his money off of legs and, and, and hands. Yeah. So if he can't get up and catch a football or run down the down the field, yeah, <sighs> that's bad business for him. That's bad ball, man. You know, yeah. yeah, big being though, you know, it's okay moving no. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Two different guys. Yeah, no, I, I understand. Um, but yeah, we're pulling for him. I actually did uh, invest in Justin Ross uh autograph rookie uh cards on that okay. I saw online. You know, it was like a, it was, it were ten dollars. I got two of them. I was like, you know what? This kid pans out, then you know what? I, I'm gonna pan out too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, man, hey. hey. <laughs> uh, my hats off to him, man. Justin Ross, man, get better. Speedy recovery, brother. Speedy yeah. recovery. Take your time to get your body right. Stay mentally prepared and everything, even at mental reps. Like, you, you know, Cornell Bay, mental reps. Those yeah. things are key. You know, that you just stay engaged. Don't disappear. Sometimes when it ends up happening, guys feel that they're injured, that they're not part of the team. And yeah. He's got to be at every meeting. He's got to be uh, engaged with, you know, lifting the weights, doing everything the other guys are doing, get in there, talk to the guy, like all the, he, just in the whole element of things, man, the whole environment, just, yeah. just eat it all up, you know, shoot. Yeah. So soaking it in. And, and that's it. When we, when we first got him, you and I were talking on the show and we, and we said like, yeah, I think probably, you know, probably give him a year to kind of soak it in on the practice squad and see where how everything goes. And then, you know, we didn't know he had the injury and he ends up having the injury. So now, when we first said initially when we first signed, I was like, okay, we get get him on a year to have him mm-hmm. kind of soak everything in, and then next year, like let 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 him get right and let him come out next year. So I mean, we'll see. I mean, hopefully he makes a team this year. Hopefully his injuries not as bad as it, you know, as it looks with the you know little uh, scooter in the and the, the boot, but mm-hmm. we'll see. Hey man, look, listen, and, and the reality is, you know, this don't necessarily have to be the end of his journey. So even if he, let's say that the Chiefs don't retain him, but they don't sign him to the practice squad. Shoot, there's, you know, other teams out there you can go to. The other guys might try to sign him. So the thing is, you know, the best thing for you to do is, is be healthy yeah. so you can go out and compete. That's the main thing. And, and right now, all we're looking for him is to be healthy at some point so he can go ahead and he can show what he can do, right, yeah. on a consistent basis. And, and that's all. At NFL, consistency. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what they need. They want that, okay? Got to be available. If you're not available, you, you can't play. Yep. What did they say? The best ability. Uh, the best ability is availability. Availability. That's right. Yep. Um, yeah. So pulling for Justin Ross. Hopefully everything's all right with that. Uh, so final topic tonight. Um, so Chiefs quarterbacks and rookies will report to training camp on July 22nd, which is Friday, um, and veterans will report on July 26th, and the first full team practice is July 27th. So JD, uh, everyone, the one thing everyone always loves about training camp is the position battles, and um, it's always a fun thing to watch, especially when you have, you know, like we talk about receivers, we have a loaded room. Um, and I guess my question is, what uh, position battles are you going to be ke- uh, keying in on um, during training camp? Uh, is there any one that stands out to you um, going into uh, training camp? Uh, obviously, it's going to be the wide receiver room. You know, because there's a lot of guys out there that, that have uh, really good talent. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see what those guys can do. Uh, and also, too, I, I tell you what, the running back room, nobody really talks about the running back room enough. And so uh, I think, man, with uh, uh, CEH, uh, Rojo, and then, of course, uh, they got our man, Kenan, uh, the Kenan back, that's going to be good. And if they keep my the, the young – Young dude from uh, from Rutgers, you know, Pacheco. So it's going to be some good competition, man, in that, in that room too. Um, I'm excited to see those guys. Uh, DB wise, there's a boatload of them jokers out there too, man. Shoot, so hey, you're going to see who, who comes out of that that whole dust up. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that that's that's going to be real exciting to see those guys like that kind of get after. Um, so really, man, that's that's pretty much the competition I'm looking at. Uh, so that, that, I think everybody's kind of checking that out. Yeah. Is there any, uh, rookie or like an undrafted guy or like an older vet that like may go into the radar for some people that you, you, that you want people to keep an eye on? Hmm. Huh. Let me see. You know what? 
Prince uh, Tucker Wong, I, I want to check him out. You know, I'm going to try to get up there to training camp, maybe the, the August the 1st. Uh, if I'm not there then, I'm, I'm going to get up there at some point to come check these guys out. But I, I want to kind of see him because I, I, I just, to my mind, I'm not understanding why he's not really getting a shot to play. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Uh, you know, my tight ends, man. You know, I always got to check him, him, him yeah. brothers out all the time. <laughs> you know, it, it's always a, be fun to watch him, watch him get after it. So they got some talent, some guys, some, some young guys that's talented too. There's gonna be some good competition. I forgot about that. They got a, they got a couple guys in there too. So that's gonna be a tight little uh, race. You know, we know we know Travis is set. Uh, you know, everybody else is kind of trying to find their way. You know, yeah. in this little mix about you know where you're gonna be number two, number three. You know, there's no gray is gonna you know starting to you know ascend. You know, even further than what he did last year. Blake Bell, what is he gonna do? You Jody. know, uh, Jody. You know, how's he coming back from the injury? Who's the new guy that they got that's supposed to be pretty good? They've been talking about in camp. I can't even think of his name right now. Yeah, but they, they, yeah him. He's supposed to be, you know, pretty decent. Uh, hopefully, now, I'm going to give everybody a treat. We're going to have a, a dude probably on next week, uh, you know, kind of talk to him a little bit. And he's going to be kind of exciting uh, uh, to, to talk to. It, it's be real interesting to have this conversation with this guy. Yeah. You know, so we'll, we'll leave it till next week for everybody to find out who it is. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be interesting, you know, hear him, him, you know, his perspective on a lot of things in the NFL right now for him. Yeah. So. And it'll be his first ever uh, practice, a, a, a full uh, training camp practice uh, in the NFL. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That'll be interesting. So, yeah. Yeah, no, it'll be interesting. Uh, the the training camp battles. I mean, we've been talking about it all, we've been kind of teasing it all off season, but yeah, the the receivers, the DBs, um, this was, it was loaded with talent um, in a way. Yeah. I, I will say not as far as like a loaded with talent way. I'm just interested to see how the edge rushers, the, the young edge rushers, and we've we've talked about guys like Joshua Kando, uh, Mike Dana, um, some of the, some of the the undrafted guys we 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 uh, we, we brought in for that. Um, yeah. I'm not, I am interested to see how Kane Doe kind of pans out, uh, if he pans out. Um, just it's a guy that like didn't really show much last year. Hopefully, that was yeah. just, you know or, or early, you know or early uh, NFL rookie jitters that we never really got to see him last year. But you know the opportunity is there for him right now. So I mean, if a guy is going to show up, it'll be the, the, this is the year to do that. Yeah, I, I definitely want to see that. Also, too, I didn't quite mention the defensive ends because I'm still thinking we're going to have two guys show up. <laughs> uh, doing training camp <laughs> so man that'd be exciting to watch like oh who's coming through the door who we got and then it's like ain't nobody like oh man okay well let's go let's ride with them let's yeah. go let's go on ride yeah. let's see what these guys got and why we didn't sign nobody so <laughs> i'm still know. i'm still refreshing my twitter every day hoping for one for for that to, for that to happen by the way <laughs> little christmas present coming yeah. through early yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, definitely excited to talk to the guy yeah. that um, that JD just mentioned. Uh, we won't tell you who it is now. You know, we'll let you guys uh, soak it in on the day of. Um, but yeah, Corey Coleman, also another name that people are just forgetting about. Corey uh, Coleman, that yeah, I don't know why I couldn't remember his name, man. Corey Coleman, I'm, man, I'm telling you, he's ready too. Corey, he's always been a talented guy. Always been, you know, hurt those little things. Like he's a guy. That's it's a great example of a yeah. guy who's been getting hurt and hadn't really had a chance on a team. But you know he's got the ability. And bad, so, situ- and bad situations too. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I will say though, the the story of this year with a lot of these receivers that we have, at least two of them. And we go, and you bring in Josh Gordon, you bring in um, uh, Coleman. If those two make the team, those are two guys who have been kind of countered out. And like we've talked about before, it's like nothing better than a redemption story and a comeback story. So I think those guys, it, it'd be really, really awesome to see those two dudes make the team. And um, Oh yeah, they go. absolutely. 100%. You know, like I said, man, Josh, man, we, we got to get Josh on the show sometime, man. Somehow we on better go over to him. Like, look, man, you got to get on the show. We had to, you know, just have a real good conversation with this guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, it'd be very interesting to have a, uh, you know, in-depth look at him and his life and his progression and what's going on here with Kansas City. Yeah. I have and I have reached out to his agent. Um, we talked a little bit last year. Um, never uh had her back since, but uh um still still trying still trying to work it through. I mean, I know it's like 
especially this offseason for our pass catchers, they've been so busy. I mean, we, we heard Cornell last week. I mean, they're so busy. I mean, they're, they're literally working yeah. all the time and especially trying to get rapport with Patrick. So, I mean. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, I, hey, look, that's good. Not- yeah, no, that's true. Hey, stay focused. Hey, they be focused. Look, I don't want to talk to nobody. I ain't, I ain't giving no interviews or no. I'm going out there to do work. Yeah. That's, a good place for, that's a good place for him to be. If that's where he's at, be there with it, right? So. All right. Well, that does it for us. Thanks for tuning in to uh, thanks for tuning in to Chief Concerns presented by Bet Online. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. And when, by the time we come on, it'll be uh, about, about day two of a uh, full team practice and training camp. So um, we'll be heading into day two. So yeah, hopefully our, our, we get that guest to come on and kind of give us a little uh, overview of what uh, what's been going on uh, with him and uh, the team. So. We'll, uh, we'll see you guys next week. And, J.D., I hope you have the, a, a great rest of your vacation, my man. Appreciate it, my brother. Hey, look, I'm, hey, you see I'm taking this, the Chiefs hat I got? And I'm heading back, man. <laughs> back on vacation, brother. All right? You enjoy it, buddy. It's like, a, it's no like the, the Superman Clark Kent. You're going to the phone booth. And you, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right, see man. you. I have a good one. All right, see you, buddy. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get podcasts.